Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Today we'll be starting a two-part tutorial that has been requested from one of our YouTube subscribers. So a chap called Mark has asked, I am new to Photoshop and I'd really like to create some buttons like the ones on your homepage, um, i.e. the more info buttons. Any chance you could do a quick tutorial on how to create them? We're splitting this tutorial into two parts. Firstly, in this video, we will design and prepare the buttons in Photoshop. And then next week, we'll take the graphic into Dreamweaver and code them up using real text and a CSS sprite. So I've got a simple canvas, which is 72 DPI RGB, and I'm using Photoshop CS5. As you can see, I've already done the uh, blue and the green um, buttons that we're going to use in our sprite. So now I'm going to create the red one from scratch. Um, on my layers, I've got a simple background. And you see I've also grouped each of the buttons that I've created so far. First thing I'm going to do is select the rounded rectangle tool. And you'll also notice that I've got my next color already uh, set in the foreground, which is red. Then using the width and height attribute of the info tab here, I'm going to create uh, a shape which is 130 pixels wide by 30 high. So whilst I'm doing this, I'm simply watching that info tab until I reach 130 by 30 high, like so. Now with the rounded rectangle tool, I have my radius set to three pixels. And I can then just position this into place. And now that I've started this, I'm just going to uh, push Command and G to create a new layer, which I'll call red. OK, so the next thing I want to do is to add a stroke. So I'm going to go to Layer. Perhaps if I click on the layer first, Layer, Layer Style, Stroke. And I'm going to add a one pixel stroke in there. I'm going to set it to the inside. And I'm going to select a sort of darker color of the red like that. OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is to then add the gradient overlay. Um, I'm going to take that and just let it set as the default black to white. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to soft light and then bring the opacity of that down to 50%. The next thing I want to do is bring in this little white arrow that I've created and I've put this together in Adobe Illustrator. I've simply just combined two uh, rounded corner rectangles and I've set that as grey just so that you can see it and I've included this in the zip file for this uh, supporting uh, blog post and if I then paste that straight in, so I've copied and pasted that from Illustrator and I'm just going to resize this to uh, 10 pixels high. Again I've just got my eye on the info tab to check when I get to 10 pixels. I'm then going to drag this over. I'm just going to change my auto select from group to layer. I'm going to drag this over into position on top of my uh, rounded shape. And I'm then going to go to layer, layer style. I'm going to add a white color overlay to this arrow. I also want to drop a little subtle shadow for this. So I'm going to set this uh, again to soft light, opacity to 100. And the distance is 1, and the size is 2. And I'm going to push OK. Next, I'm going to introduce some text. If you want to save these graphics uh, with the text, then you can do so from here. But in a moment, we're going to take all the text off, because we're going to do that in the next tutorial in CSS. And um, we just type something like find out more. And I'm going to change this now to white by changing the foreground color. And I'm just going to position this into place. Obviously, you can use whichever typeface and size that you wish. I've simply got um, Arial, which is size 11 bold, which you can see up here at the top. And I'm just going to uh, position that in the correct place. What I'm also then going to do is, looking at my layers, I'm going to copy the drop shadow that I've already created for the arrow. So I'm going to hover my ass over drop shadow over here. I'm going to hold down Alt and then drag this onto the find out more text which will copy that effect exactly like that. So the, the final thing that we need to do for the first eight of our button is to add the little sort of white highlight colour at the top of the button. So to do this uh, we're going to create a new layer I can call this uh, highlight perhaps and we're then just going to zoom in on the red panel. Next I'm selecting the marquee tool, so we're in our new layer. I'm just going to select the little perimeter that I wish to use for the highlight. And I'm just creating this with the marquee tool. Like 
So okay, so I've just selected the uh, left hand side, the right hand side, just inside the stroke and across the top. I'm then going to select the gradient tool. I'm just going to ch uh, check that I've had this set to foreground color to transparent. Then on this new layer, I'm just going to simply click, then drag the gradient downwards to create a sort of downwards gradient in my marqueed area, like so. And then to this layer, I simply apply, uh, instead of changing the blending mode, sorry, I'm going to change that to overlay. As you see, that sort of burns in quite nicely. So let's zoom back out. You can see now that this button is uh, finished. We just simply create the overstate for when you hover your mouse over this button. So I'm just going to uh, close that group there. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to duplicate the group. So I'll save this as red over. And I'm just going to select, also select back to group. And I'm just going to drag this one down below. The advantages of copying this layer as opposed to creating it um, from scratch is that you know that all the text and the arrow is going to be in the exact same position. So that when you do hover over, it's not going to uh, change, like, uh, the text won't change position slightly. So let's expand our red over tab, and I'm just going to change now the color. So I'm going to select the foreground color from red by double clicking it, and I'm going to change our red color to a very light gray with the reference EF, EF, EF. I'm then going to open up the gradient overlay for this layer. I'm just going to change the opacity of our soft light blend up to 100%. Next, all that I need to do is change the color of the text from white to red. So I'm just selecting the red from the middle of the tab. And then I need to do the same thing for our arrow, which is that there, there. So layer, layer style. So we're going to change the color overlay from what it is at the moment, from white to the red. And that's essentially all that we need to do for both the uh, on and over state of our two buttons. In order to prepare these now for creating a CSS sprite, um, I'm typically just going to take away all of the text from the buttons. So that's the blue, blue over, green, and finally our new red buttons. Now I'm just going to position all these together now, because I'm just going to create one sprite that we can use. So that the if we, if we tightly uh, compact these images into one image, it will just help us save on file size. So next I'm going to get rid of the background, and I'm just going to go to Image Trim, and this will get rid of all transparent pixels on the canvas for us. And now that we have our sprite ready for uh, taking into Dreamweaver, we'll just go to uh, File, Save for web and devices. And we'll simply save this as a PNG24, ready for part two of the tutorial. So don't forget to tune in next week for part two of this tutorial, where we'll be integrating them onto a web page with real text and CSS sprites. Thanks for watching.